Why Jurassic Pun? Well, because Grim took the good title and I couldn't think of something else. Hey Canonites, welcome back to Halo Canon. As I'm sure you've guessed, this week we revisit Halo Hunters in the Dark, so let's dive right in. After a very brief summary of the book, we dive a bit more into the returning characters, notably Uze Taham and Untho Sraum, and then a bit on Olympia Vale. The return of Uze and Untho was definitely a highlight for Hunters in the Dark, taking two Sangheili beloved for allowing gamers to do more than play as clones of the Master Chief, and turning them into real characters. We'll get a bit more to them later on in the video. When discussing Vale, Grimm was able to bring in Brian Reed for a spell and give us a little more insight into the process of how a character like Vale is developed, both for her game appearance and her role in Halo Hunters in the Dark. The basic breakdown is that 343 had a vision for Vale in Halo 5, Peter David using that as a springboard for how she would be characterized in her pre-Spartan days. 343 then took a bit of that development into consideration, building further on Vale's personality and traits for Halo 5. It's a nice feedback loop, and wonderful to hear that these books are influencing the fiction in more ways than we had previously thought. It can only mean good things moving forward. Next up is something I've personally been looking forward to, as have others, I'm sure. An interview with the author himself, Peter David. As with any interview with the author, it's something best left to experience yourself. Personally, my favorite question was about the difference in writing for a book versus a comic. In case you don't know, Hunters in the Dark isn't Peter David's first entry in the Halo universe, the author having previously written for the comic series Halo Helljumper. If you've watched my review of Halo Hunters in the Dark, you know I did take issue with some parts of the narrative, but overall I felt it was a solid novel, and I hope Mr. David has the chance to return in the future. The next section is definitely a highlight this week as we look at some of the creatures that appeared in Hunters in the Dark. I'm sure by now you're all familiar with the Blind Wolf, a creature that dates back to Halo's pre-Xbox and even pre-FPS days, but there are other creatures, some of which I failed to talk about in my review proper. We start with the Sky Leviathan, a flying whale in essence, and a creature originally meant to appear in Halo 4. These creatures were known to the Forerunners as the Ulfmeri, and their breathtaking ability to grace the skies of Installation 00 remains a mystery to Oni scientists. Next up is the Tusk Beast, a creature cut from Halo Wars. It was known to the Forerunners as the Chaevka, and to ancient humanity, it was the Neldarut. They have the unique ability to give off a pheromone that produces psychotropic effects in other creatures, an ability taken advantage of in Hunters in the Dark. Next up, of course, is the Blind Wolf, which I think we've talked about enough up to this point. Interestingly, though, this entry names the mission to the Ark from Hunters in the Dark as Operation Far Storm. The Forerunners called these creatures Moraloth. Finally, we have Quad Wings, known to the Forerunners as Rangmejo, or something like that. These creatures number among the few actually seen as ambient life in the Halo games, notably during Halo 2's campaign and on the multiplayer map Guardian in Halo 3, among other locations. It seems their presence on both Delta Halo and the Lesser Ark is related to the meddling of the Forerunners, the creatures adapted to play important and varied roles in the various ecosystems on both installations. The final section of the article is another cannon fodder chatternet, this one focusing on the favored moments from, you guessed it, Hunters in the Dark. It's always interesting to see what fellow Halo fans enjoy, and I encourage you to read through some of these entries as they are genuinely interesting. If you ever want to see yourself in a future Chatternet entry, keep a close eye on the Universe Forum on Halo Waypoint. With that, the article comes to a close, and we move on to what is probably the highlight for many fans this week, the Universe Articles. This week we have Uze Taham, Untho Sraum, Spartan Olympia Vale, and the Soldier Armager Combat Platform. If you've read Hunters in the Dark, much of the info will be familiar, but there is plenty of new tidbits to sink your teeth into. We start out, of course, with Uze Taham. Uze was born to a merchant family in the keep of Sumai, his father, Toha Sumai, a prominent sword fighter, a trait that Uze seems to have inherited. Not long after his first posting, Uze was offered a spot in the Honor Guard, an offer he declined, citing his inexperience. In truth, Uze didn't care for what was largely a ceremonial unit. He would be offered again later in his career, but again turned it down. This led to several punitive actions and two assassination attempts, but Uze survived and continued to serve with honor. Along with the Honor Guard, Uze was also noticed by a sect of Sanghili known as the Ascetics, an ancient order devoted to a pre-covenant faith. Following the Great Schism, the Ascetics once again rose to prominence largely due to the foundation laid by Uze and others who kept the faith alive. Among other duties in the post-war Covenant era, Uze acts as a liaison between several Sanghili factions, including the Aesthetics, along with feuding keeps, and even the UNSC. Interestingly, the article seems to imply that Uze remained with Urthas during the breakout of the Great Schism. Though we see him with the Chief and the Arbiter during co-op, the canon version of events has always been single-player. 
Following the Battle of Installation 00 and the end of the Covenant War, Uze would continue to follow the Arbiter and Urtas Vadum, his commander, helping where needed though increasingly focused on matters with his own keep. In 2555, he participated in Operation Far Storm, during which he returned to the Ark to stop the activation of the Halo Array. Moving on to Untho, we discover that he is the Sangheili we see on the cover of Hunters in the Dark. Given that this is Untho, I have to wonder if the Spartan might be Kodiak given their history. Still, it could just as easily be Spartan Holt, the other Spartan character from Hunters. Untho is a young Sangheili and was the youngest of his Spec Ops unit during the breakout of the Great Schism. When he first enlisted, his prowess for leadership and strategy put him on an accelerated path for promotion. When the Great Schism broke out, he quickly rallied with the Arbiter, following Thel to Earth to stop the activation of the portal and later to the Ark. Post-war, Untho is a loyal member of the Swords of Sanghelios, and believes that Sangheili still clinging to Covenant ideals are a disgrace deserving only of quick death. Like Uze, Untho was called upon in 2555 to take part in Operation Far Storm due to his experience on the Ark. Now, and even when he was first introduced to fans, Untho was noted for his respect for humanity and their tenacity. Next up is Olympia Vale. Born in 2536, Vale's mother was a rising star in the Navy Signal's intelligence. During a trip to Earth following her mother's promotion to Captain and reassignment to High Comp, their transport slipspace drive malfunctioned, turning what was meant to be a six-day trip into a six-month limp to the nearest planet. During that time, Olympia listened to AI translations of Sankhili transmissions, teaching herself the language and even correcting and improving some translations. Vale would go on to join Oni in Signal Intelligence and found herself assigned as a liaison between the UEG and the Sankhili following the war. In 2555, she played a crucial role in Operation Farstorm. Following that, Vale found herself dissatisfied with her old routine and joined the UNSC War Games, an inter-service event for soldiers that utilize technology similar to that used to train Spartans. Despite her relative inexperience, she placed in the top 5%, catching the eyes of the Spartan 4 program. She was chosen for her combat prowess and her experience in post-war affairs. We end with a look at the Soldier, a type of Forerunner Armager. They were originally used by the Didact to infiltrate human ships during the Human Forerunner War, and later used to bolster Forerunner defenses in the fight against the Flood. Most were exhausted during these battles, though some remained to guard key Forerunner sites. Their recent appearance would indicate that someone has rediscovered a means to manufacture them. Didact! <coughs> Didact! <coughs> and that was Cannon Fodder. Lots of interesting stuff, especially if you haven't read Hunters in the Dark, yet nothing very spoilery. As always, check out the articles yourself, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.